Are we teaching the truth in love? Telling it like it is. Like it is. Like it is. Are we holding pure motives, showing that we care? Are we teaching the truth in love? Abraham and the Lamb. That is our subject for this evening for these series of Bible lessons. Abraham and the Lamb. Genesis chapter 22, beginning with verse number one. Would you get your Bibles? And you got to see this. Abraham and the Lamb. Genesis chapter 22, beginning with verse number one. Please get your Bibles. Please get the word of God and follow along with us as we talk about Abraham and the Lamb. Listen to the text, Genesis 22 and verse number one, beginning. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountain which I tell thee of. Verse number three. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. Drop down the verse number seven. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, son. And he said, Behold the fire for the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide him a lamb for a burnt offering. And they went both of them together. This particular passage of scripture is all about Abraham and the lamb. It's really not about God, even though God is almighty, but this passage is about Abraham and the lamb. It's not about Abraham's servants. It's really not about Isaac. It's about Abraham and the lamb. I want you to look at something that struck me very uh, abruptly when I first read it. It said that God tempted Abraham or God tested Abraham. Look at the word test there. It is a Hebrew word for to prove or to test. God tempted or God tested Abraham. It comes from the goldsmith uh, industry. And when something was proven as gold, it was, before it was proven as gold, it was tested or it was proven by fire. Because everything that glitters is not gold. Grandmama said a long time ago, everything that glitters is not gold. So it has to be tested. It has to be certified. It has to be proven as gold. And so when a sample of metal was brought to the goldsmith, he would throw it in the furnace, in the fire, several hundred degrees. And if this metal came out shining, it was certified 
as gold. Guess what God does when we claim that we are Christians? Guess, guess what God does when we claim that we are people of God? God throws us in the furnace. God proves us and tests us by fire. That's why Job said these words in Job uh, chapter 23 and verse number 10. Listen to what Job says. But he knoweth the way that I take. And when he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. What Job was saying is, yes, God is testing me right now, but I am gold. I am genuine. I'm the real McCoy. I am gold. And I need to ask you today, are you really gold? Are you the real McCoy? Are you a genuine Christian? Or are you just going through the motions? Are you... Uh, Someone that just goes along to get along. That's the question we want to ponder today. Are you genuine? Are you real gold? Are you the real deal? Listen to this. Every, every, every. Did I say every? Every child of God must be tested. Their faith must be tested. I said every child of God. There, th this is mandatory. It's required. It is not something that is it, you might call uh, a a option, but it is required. Every child of God must be tested. Their faith must be tested. This is what the Bible says in Second Timothy. Chapter 3 and verse number 12. Yea, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All, A-L-L, -L, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall must suffer persecution. No one is exempt. You know, when I was in high school, uh, there was a school policy uh, going into the final test or the uh, final test of the year. If you had a, a average in a particular subject, you were exempt from the final examination. You were exempt. You did not have to take the test. You were given an A if you had an A average now. I'm sorry to tell you, brothers and sisters. Oh, you can have an A average. You can have a spiritual A average, but you still got to be tested. You must go through the fire. You must be tested. You are not exempt. No one is exempt. I don't care how attractive you are. You're not exempt. I don't care how faithful you are. You're not exempt. You may have perfect attendance. Perfect church attendance, and you're still not exempt. Everyone, every one of God's children must be tested. Their faith must be tested. And so it is, the Bible says, that, that God tested Abraham. What a challenge this was for Abraham. What a challenge it was. How do you kill your own son? How do you kill your own son? And how do you burn him? And how do you sacrifice your own son, your, your only son? How do you do that? What a challenge it was. What a challenge it was. What a test it was for Abraham to kill his own son. This was the son the promise. This was the son that God had promised Abraham. This was the son of his old age. Old Abraham was 100 years old when he bore this boy Isaac. 100 years old. Oh, when a man, when an old man 
has a son. Oh, it does something for his ego. I say when an old man, when an old man has a child, it does something for his ego. Oh, it certifies him that he's still a man. Even though there is snow on the roof, there is fire in the oven. When an old man, I tell you, when an old man has a child, and so it was, God tested Abraham. God tested Abraham. Yes, I want to ask you today, have you been tested? Have you gone through the fiery trials? If you have not gone through the fiery trials, just sit down. Just wait a while. Just sit in God's waiting room and you will be tested. I ask you the question, what's your test? What kind of test is God taking you through? What is your test? It may be physical pain and suffering. It may be cancer. It may be lung problems. It may be back problems. It may be some kind of enduring pain and suffering. Perhaps that's your test. Perhaps your test may be your marriage. It may be a bad marriage. It may be divorce. It may be a separation. That may be your test. Your test may be a handicap. Your test may be the death of someone that you really loved. Someone that you really love. That may be your test. This pandemic that we're going through is a test for many Christians. This pandemic that we are going through right now may be your test. God is testing many of us in this pandemic. And the question we're asking today is, what is your, what is your test? I, I, I want us to see the purpose of this test. Don't miss the point. Uh, if you miss this, you will miss everything. What is the purpose? Why did God test Abraham? Because if you do not understand this, you will be forever wondering why. When you go through trials and tribulation, you will forever be asking why. Why me, Lord? Why this? Why now? You need to understand this. Don't go anywhere. Don't change the channel because you need to understand why God is taking Abraham through these tests. Look at Abraham now. Get up in the morning, saddle his donkey, get his servants, get the wood, get Isaac, and they head to the mountains. As they get closer to the mountains, oh, oh, Isaac said, Father, I see the fire, I see the wood, but where is the sacrifice? We'll get to that in a few minutes. But then look at Abraham. Now he makes the altar, he builds the altar, perhaps with some stones. And then he, he puts the wood upon the stones there. And then he binds Isaac's hands. And then he lays Isaac upon the wood. Gets his knife. And he's just about to slit the throat of his own son. When an angel from heaven called him, Abraham, don't harm your son. Don't harm your son. But I want you to listen for the reason why. Listen to the reason why. In verse number 12, God said, Now I know that thou dost fear me or fear God. That's the reason. 
God wanted to know, God wanted to know that Abraham feared him. And there's a lot encompassed in this word fear. It means respect. It means obedience. It means love. It means trust. Now I know that you trust me. Now I know that you love me. Now I know that you obey me. Now I know. Oh, it's good that you know. It's good that you know, that you know, that you know. And here God says, now I know, Abraham. I know that you love me. I know you respect me. I know you trust me. I know. I know now, Abraham. I know. You see, God does not want us going around bragging about how we trust God and how we know God and how we respect God without going through the test. You see, anybody can say that they are Christian, anybody can say that they love God, but until you have been tried, until you have been tested, you do not have a testimony. But oh, when you have been tested, you got the testimony. Oh, you got the testimony then. When you have been tried, God has the evidence. Oh, that's what Job said. I want you to listen to what Job said when he, was, when he went through the trials and when, when, he, when God tried him. And Job said these words in Job chapter 16 and verse number 19. My witness is in heaven and my record or my name is on high. My witness is in heaven and my record is on high. Oh, one of these days you're going to need a witness. Oh, you're going to need a witness. And Job said, my witness is in heaven. My name or my record is on high. It's good to have your name on the church roll. It's good to have your name on the city roll. But oh, I want my name on the heavenly roll up there. And so it was with Job. I want you, I want us to see this. In the midst of your test, remember that God will provide. That's in verse number eight. Again, you remember when, when Isaac uh, and his father was going to the site which they, he was going to sacrifice his son, Isaac said, Father, I see the fire, I see the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Isaac didn't realize that he was the lamb. He didn't realize at that particular point that he was the lamb. He was the sacrificial lamb. It's all about the lamb. It's all about Abraham and the lamb. Then Abraham said these words, don't ever forget it, don't ever forget it, don't ever forget it. My son, God will provide a lamb. Oh, God will provide, listen to those words, God will provide. Oh, throughout the Bible, that's a theme throughout the Bible, God will provide. If he bring it, if he bring it to you, he will bring it through you or he will bring you through it. If he bring it to you, it will bring he will bring you through it. Oh, God. Oh, the almighty God. What a God he is. Oh, God will provide. If you don't believe me, ask David. God will provide. If you don't believe me, ask David. David said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He will provide. If you don't believe me, ask Elijah. Down in the desert, no food, no water. Oh, he was down in the desert all alone. And God catered a meal to him every day by the raven. The birds brought him food every day, every morning and every evening. God will provide. If you don't believe me, ask Elijah. And Elijah will tell you, oh, God will provide. If you don't believe me, ask me. Ask me. I got a testimony. A son being raised by a single mom. 
Oh, she got sick one day, couldn't work. Almost a year she couldn't work, had a serious surgery. We didn't know, I didn't know how I was going to survive. She had to go and stay with her sister while I stayed alone at 17 years old. I got a testimony. I got a testimony that God will provide. I didn't miss one meal. God will provide. I'm a testimony. Don't get me testifying in here. I, I, got, a, I got a testimony that God will provide. You see, all of this is a premonition of the Lamb that God will provide for the entire world. The Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. This is a premonition of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. That Lamb, that Lamb in the bush. Oh, God said, look, Abraham. Don't kill your son. There's a lamb over there in the bush. Get that lamb and make a sacrifice. We are talking about the lamb of God. Jesus Christ was that lamb. He was the escape goat. That lamb. It's all about the lamb. The question, though, we need to ask, though. With Abraham, we need to ask this question. How did Abraham pass the test or why did he pass the test? Why did Abraham pass the test? Why did God say, I now know that you trust me or you love me or you fear me? Why did God say that? Listen very closely. Because of Abraham's complete obedience. Abraham did everything that God asked him to do. And that's why Abraham passed the test. And oh, that's why Abraham passed the test. Oh, when you do everything that God asks you to do, you will pass the test. You remember when Jesus and his mother and his disciples went to the wedding feast in Canaan, they ran out of wine. Oh, Mary came to Jesus and said, they have no wine. And Jesus was going to turn water into wine. And it told, uh, she told the servants there at the wedding feast that concerning Jesus, whatsoever he says, do it. Whatsoever he said, do it, and he will turn water into wine. And when they did what Jesus said do, the water became wine. Oh, I tell you, when you do what Jesus said do, he can turn your water to wine. He can make some good wine. I tell you, Jesus can make some good wine. He made the wine. He turned the water into wine. Whatsoever he says, you ought to do it. It may be hurting but do it. You may have to step out of the box, but do it. You may have to step out of your comfort zone, but do it. It may be painful, but do it. But, and God will bless you. Oh, God will bless you. And when Abraham passed the test, God blessed Abraham. I want you to listen to what the Bible says in Genesis 22 and verse number 16. And say by myself I swear, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessings I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. God blessed Abraham. God blessed Abraham when he obeyed and when he passed the test. Job passed the test and God blessed him. Joseph passed the test and God blessed him. And my friend, when you pass the test, God will bless you. One more thing before we leave. One more thing before we leave. 
When God tests your faith, count it all joy. When God tests your faith, count it all joy. That's what the Bible said. Let me read it. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations or trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Put some joy in your trials. When you're going through the trials and tribulation, don't let the trials and tribulation steal your joy. Can I whisper something to you? There are some people that are going through trials and tribulation, but you will never know it. There are some people who are going through H-E-L-L, -L, but you will never know it. You will never know it. They, they, they'll go through the joy. They go through the trials and tribulation with, with joy in their heart. You will never know it. Back this past summer, check with Bozeman. Do you know him? Surprised everybody. His death surprised everybody. People did not know he had a serious case of cancer. And during his cancer, he made some of the best movies. Yes, came to work every day with chemotherapy, had gone through several surgeries, and people never knew it. People never knew it. There are some people who are going through some things, and you will never know it because they go through it with a joy. But there's another superstar. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's the lamb. Listen to the, uh, the lamb, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, Jesus. Did you hear that? For the joy that was set before him, the joy he endured the cross, went to the cross with joy. They spat in his face, still had joy. Pierced him in the side, he still had joy. They placed and pressed a, a crown of thorns on his head, he still had joy. Going through all of this, he had joy. Don't let nothing steal your joy. Don't let nothing steal your joy. It's all about the lamb. The lamb went through all of these things. Still had joy. It's all about Abraham and the Lamb. Abraham and the Lamb. That's the message today. This is Brother James Gray, the minister of the Eastside Church of Christ. We love you and may God richly bless you today.